we have Raj Suri on our show today. Actually, we have Karan Suri on our show today. Um, who's, uh, well, actually, we'll get right into it because I'm more excited about, I think, a couple things. This was supposed to be a podcast. Phil is uh, taxiing kids from Toronto to New York and sounds like he's battling traffic and parking. So he said he just couldn't make it, which was fine. Um, for you and I, I'm excited to have you on to talk about two provincial programs that are running that are of a huge help and importance to, um, I would assume, processors to some degree, brands for sure. Um, so I'm excited to have you on and excited to talk to you about this. We'll throw it up on a fast thought. It's usually a 15 minute YouTube, but it'll give the entire audience a really good chance just to learn what's going on. And then Karn and I were talking on the way in from my event and said, listen, we'll have you back on to do a full podcast in the new year. But right now, that's what we got. So it's senior manager, program management, uh, M&P, who's a consultative type of group, which I will let you explain because I will screw that up royally. So for you, young man, what I'd love for you to do is a quick intro, who you are, what you're doing. Um, this is going to be more of a PSA because I think it's really, really important. You and I had talked about this a couple months ago, and I think we've got you on now because it sounds like the programs are buttoned down to some degree or ready to go in the new year. So I'm really, really excited for people to hear this because I know people do wait for um, these programs to come back online. Um, to help with what the stuff you are going to describe to us momentarily. So for you, young man, next 15 or 20 is all yours, buddy boy. I'll ask uh, questions here and there because my brain will turn into brand and I'll be thinking of all the things that I want to try to tap into potentially. So I will, I will pester you a little bit, but for the most part, it's yours. Sounds good. Thanks, Ken. Thanks for having me. No, um, oh, hopefully we won't need the 15 minutes and 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 really the goal here is to uh get individuals um that are super interested in these two funding programs that we're going to discuss today and get them onto the program website get them registered for a webinar that we're going to be hosting on each of the programs and and start to start to dive into uh the program guides that provide significantly more detailed information on both the programs okay. and get them to start um, creating their applications in the new year when that opens. So with that, um, quick intro, my name's Karan Suri. Uh, I know it, it, in the recording it might show Raj Suri, that's actually my middle name, Raj, but you can find me on LinkedIn or uh, wherever else you'd like, uh, Karan, K-A-R-A-N Suri. Um, I'm a senior manager with MNP. Uh, MNP, uh, many of you may know, is a, a professional services firm primarily uh, deals in accounting, tax, and other services. But I represent um, the consulting side of the firm. And specifically, uh, I, along with my colleagues, um, specialize in the management and administration of grant funding programs. Um, we currently administer, as a, as a firm in British Columbia, we currently administer uh, eight funding programs on behalf of the government of British Columbia, um, on behalf of Crown Agency of the government of British Columbia, and on behalf of um, another uh, regional uh, sort of economic development organization. Um, the, the, my, my background a little bit is I spent 14 and a half years working for the government of British Columbia. Um, I also had some experience in the private sector in the food processing space that Ken, I know you're aware of. Yeah. Um, and so uh, while I was working with the government of BC uh, in, in a former life, I helped BC companies uh, export their products and services. I used to take them to large international food shows around the world, purchase large uh, booth space for BC, uh, BC government branded booth space, and then help uh, our companies showcase their products through that and help them find buyers at the trade shows. Um, today, uh, like I said, I, 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 I wear the hat of program management in administering some funding programs. And so we're happy to uh, sort of come on today and announce the next intake uh, or the twin fiscal year 24 uh, 25 uh, intake for uh, two funding programs under the bc ministry of agriculture and food um, both of these programs were relaunched um, over the last few months so a fiscal year 23 and 24 intake was held applications were received they were reviewed they were um, awarded and uh, projects are currently running 
under the current year um, of funding for both of these programs. So the first program is the Buy BC Partnership Program. It's sort of the flagship funding program for the BC Ministry of Agriculture and Food. Um, the Buy BC Partnership Program is for BC uh, agricultural producers, so farmers, um, for processors, um, cooperatives, industry associations, et cetera. Um, uh, individuals that are either producing 100% uh, BC uh, grown product or primarily a uh, product that's been produced in the province of British Columbia. The products under this program do need to be by BC licensed by the ministry. So prior to even applying for funding, you must go to the BC Ministry of Agriculture and Food. It's fairly straightforward. The website's provided on our website um, and you need to sort of answer a few questions uh, and they will look to uh, award you a license um, that allows you to declare that your product is sort of uh, by BC um, certified and that means and, we can, and you can claim it on our product or right. web page that really cool little by BC that's right yeah okay. yeah that, exactly yeah pr pr precisely so uh, now you can you can go and get sort of by BC certified there's no cost at all absolutely associated with that um, and then once you're certified you can start using that sort of label or that logo on your product um, or you can come to the Buy BC Partnership Program, which is the program that we're talking about today and administering, and you can actually uh, um, uh, request cost shared funding that now that your product is certified by BC and you wanna say, for example, include that logo on your labels, your product labels, which don't currently include that Buy BC logo, and it's gonna cost you some design fees, right. um, uh, you know, you could Printing, apply for packaging, all that fun stuff. That's right. You could you could apply for some cost share funding, oh, and okay. if you're successful, then uh, fifty percent of that funding of the cost of that activity would be reimbursed to you um, uh, through MNP through the through the program that we administer, but via the BC Ministry of Agriculture and Food and the BBC Partnership Program. Um, other things that you can do through the BBC Partnership Program, the best way that I like to describe the BBC Partnership Program is think about it as you're marketing your product domestically in the province of British Columbia. Right. So if you need to do radio, print, television, digital, online advertisements, that can be an activity that can be 50% funded. Um, if you're If you're the first time receiving funding through the program, you get 50% funding. So that means that you pay for 50% of the cost, the ministry pays for 50% of the is cost. Is there a cap? Like, am I talking a million dollars or is it a $50,000 cap or is there? Yeah, there's there's caps associated with it. Uh, and just off the top of my head, the cap for, it, it varies. So if you're an industry association, then your cap is $75,000 okay. uh, for the year in activities. Um, now, uh, and, and sorry, that's the funding cap. Right. So that's the 50% that the ministry will fund. Um, so that means that the pro total project cost needs to be $150,000 right. for you to get $75,000. Right. If you're a producer or processor, uh, okay. the, the cap depends on um, sort of your gross revenues over the last couple of years. Okay. And if your gross revenues were less than $250,000 a year, your cap is fifteen thousand dollars a year in cost shared funding. Still pretty it's, good, though. Eh? Yep. I mean, it's it's something, right? It's it's activities well, that you're probably going stuff, to be. Right? Yeah. I mean, I, a lot of times they don't have. You know, that's not easy money to find. But you don't right. just find it on the street, right? You got to. That could be a lot of money for some small companies. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Um, if it's an activity that you were sort of, um, I mean, and these are important activities for you to do, right? These are marketing activities that are going right. to drive revenue back into um, into your company. So if you are if you have gross revenues of over $250,000 a year then the funding cap is $30,000 okay. uh, in cost shared funding for you. Okay. Um, and 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 so we mentioned um, things like a product label uh, redesign including the by BC yep. logo. We mentioned sort of digital advertisements. Uh, if you were interested in going to a industry focused trade show, domestic trade show in BC that that 
caters to um, industry in British Columbia, you could you could pay for um, uh, you could fund uh, the cost of the registration of that trade show as an exhibitor, not as a uh, participant, not as a walker. So if you're looking to get a booth and the cost of um, renting the booth, the cost of um, uh, other equipment that you would so need like a to... CHFA or a BC Food right. and Bev kind of thing. If you wanted That's to right. be in front of uh, with the audience that I'm assuming retailers or people that would be potentially purchasing your product, um, they're, they're good to go on that. Yeah, totally. Uh, CHFA mm -hmm. is probably one of the more popular ones in, in BC. So yeah, absolutely. You're, okay, you're, you're cool. right. Um, that kind of activity. Um, the other the other activity that a lot of companies like to take advantage of through this program is in-store demonstration. So oh. your product is already being is already on the shelves in a particular retailer or a number of retailers, and you either want to conduct this activity yourself or you want to hire another marketing company to demonstrate your product, to do sampling in store. Um, that those are activities uh, that can be funded through this program as well because it's considered marketing expense. So, like, and if you're sampling beside it, let's say you wanted to have uh, a prepack, like you wanted to design a display, or would that be potentially included in? Well, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. Those types well, of activities because, as well. You know, yeah. I mean, if you can do all of that, you're on shelf, a little display and a demo, the logo. Not, you know, not the worst thing in the world going on, right? Especially today, yeah. you can find some money to help you push ahead. A lot yeah. worse things that can happen in your day. Yeah, no, no, I, absolutely. Yeah, no, you're right. So so those are the kinds of uh, very okay, cool. at, at, a, at a sort of high level activities that you can do through the Buy BC Partnership Program. Yeah. So um, the Buy BC Partnership Program, I, I, if you're already on the distribution list, um, then you would have received an email uh, in the last week or so. Yeah. Uh, if you're not, <laughs> I highly encourage you to go to the website for the Buy BC Partnership Program. The website is www by BC partnership program dot ca. Yep. Uh, once you go to the website, uh, you will be able to find the program guide on the website. You'll be able to find all of the eligibility criteria on the website. You'll also learn through that that the next intake of applications is opening on January 8th. So oh, on wow. January 8th, you'll be able to go to the website. You'll be able to go to the apply now button. Um, and if you've already been registered previously uh, on that portal, you can log in using your credentials or you can create a new login if you have not previously applied for funding through this program. And you can um, uh, submit your application or start to um, submit your application. Um, and uh, in addition to that, uh, we are hosting a uh, webinar for the BIBC Partnership Program. The webinar uh, for this particular program I believe uh, off the top of my head is happening on January 9th. Um, that information and the, <laughs> excuse me, the link to register for that webinar is again on the BBC Partnership okay. Program website. So go there. Um, Eighth for the program, and, ninth for the webinar. That's right. Register first, so you got to go and yeah. get registered. How complicated it is for people like me, remember who you're talking to, how complicated do I need to bring my son with me and get Daniel to do all this paperwork or am I going to be able to do this by myself? It's it's really straightforward. So the okay. application portal is designed so that you can save your questions as you go. You don't need to sit down all at once and do everything. There's okay. really there's really a couple major uh, stages there, right? There's information about your company. Yeah. There's information about the activities that you want to do that you're asking to be funded for. Right. And then the final thing that we ask for is a breakdown of your budget of those activities, a high level breakdown of the budget. Okay. And, and all of that information is provided on the website, including sort of sample budgets um, and, um, and, 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 and through the application portal. So you okay. can get started on January 8th. And then as you collect more information, you can go back into the portal and keep adding adding on and building on and building on until the date that the applications are due, which is February 2nd. So February 2nd um, in the afternoon in, in British Columbia, the applications are due. You must submit it. You must click the submit button on the portal by then for us to receive the application and for you to be considered for funding. And then how long for the consideration typically? And I'm assuming as long as my plan's pretty clear, like I, I'm pretty clear on what I want to do and I'm really trying, I guess people remember, it's about driving sales and, and growth. I've got probably pretty good odds, I would assume, 
of getting or is there like an x amount of bucket and the faster i get in the better like how does that work or is it just random yeah no really good question it's not a first in first come okay. uh, funding programs it is done so on an it properly that's right so take your time do it properly uh okay. put your best foot forward uh it is quite competitive and historically has been quite competitive in that um we get significantly more request for funding than funding is available. Okay, fair enough. Um, and so what that means is that all applications are evaluated merit-based um, and, and, and they are all scored against each other and, and sorry, not really against each other, but they're scored against um, some criteria that has right. been, again, put, put in the program guide. And so you're provided a score and then you're ranked against all of the other applications. Okay. And it's, it's very simple. The highest ranked applications, those that score the highest get the funding okay. um, uh, until the funding runs out. And, and so that's really how it works. Um, the one thing to remember is that while the application intake window opens January 8th, this is for projects that are expected to start their activities April 1st. Okay. So, 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 so you ask the question of how long it takes to sort of make the decision and everything. By the time you submit your applications February 2nd, between February 2nd and about mid-March is when we will start uh, right. responding to companies and saying, you've been successful. We now invite you to enter into a funding agreement with MNP in order for you to right. be able to receive the money. Okay. And then is uh, what is what sort of the time frame from there? I, not for anything, people could, I'm sure could find this out online, but since you and I are talking, like you got from April 1st to X amount of time to, I'm assuming, spend this money, but you can't go willy nilly. I'm assuming you're probably gonna have to submit as you're going to make sure that you're following uh, criteria. Like it, it's not just a free for all, like you have to be doing the right things, whatever those might be based on what I guess you proposed to the government. Yeah, I mean, the plan that you submitted to us in your application as to what you were going to do, when you were going to do it, um, what sorts of costs you were going to incur, you were evaluated against that. Okay. And you were awarded your project for that. So the the expectation is that you would follow that fairly closely. Now, now things change, right? Like yeah. deviations can happen and, and, and MNP and our team <laughs> will be uh, there to sort of listen to you and, and see right. whether the propose the changes that you're proposing are reasonable or not. And, right. and where they are reasonable, we will allow for certain, certain okay. changes to occur. But generally speaking, we, we ask that you stick to um, what you had proposed to do. The reason I ask that, because I want to make sure people understand again, the most important part, I'm assuming then, is really get your shit together, put it on paper, take your time, there's no rush to hit submit. You've got till the second, but get your thoughts and get it organized and put things down properly. Because if you come out out of left field, you could be potentially rejected down the road or you're not going to fit what you've told the government and MAP what you were going to do. Take your yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a, it's a really good point. And that's why we've announced the, the next launch, the next intake dates for both of the programs okay. now, well in advance of the holidays okay. in, in, in that it allows people to get started on that work and start at least, you know, reading the program guide, understanding, okay. um, um, what the criteria is all about and get started on some of those, some of that work. It really gives you a head start so that come January 8th, January 8th, you can at least start populating the application, but again, you get another month to right. sort of complete that activity. So um, let me ask you something quickly. So let's say if I got help to do this, let's say that I look at it and it's, I find it daunting because I, I know there's people that are going to find it daunting. If I had um, not you because you're part of the group that's evaluated, but if I had someone like you that knew how to do this, and I'm assuming there would be a, a someone's going to charge me to do my paperwork. Is can that be part of the process? Because I know in some grants it can be. That's why I'm asking. Like, so if someone's freaking out, thinking, "Shit, I don't know how to do this. I, I don't even know where to start." If they went and got help, is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. Um, organizations do hire uh, consultants, grant writers um, to do their application, but I think it's important to understand that that money is coming out of the organization's pocket, not okay. through the funding on. Not through so the funding. You can't add the cost of a consultant or a grant writer 
onto the requested funds for the program. I know one time in certain ones you could, so that's why I asked. I just want to make sure people again understand it. It's probably just the beauty of why we wanted to get this out quickly is because but this is the 15th today because uh, I have no ability to do this. We have to wait for Phil. So Phil probably will get this out Monday or Tuesday, but you've got time, like Karen said, through the holidays, take a breath of air, do a little bit one day, do a little bit air, take your time, and you've got some time to get this done and by yourself probably, hopefully, without having to hire somebody. Yeah, no, absolutely. A vast majority of organizations do not uh, hire any outside okay. help to do the application. It really is set up in a way that... It's pretty easy. Um, we hope is is pretty straightforward for companies yep. to understand. Now, that being said, we understand small businesses. Yep. You've got, in some cases, more important things to do, fires to sort of put out, and yep. that you just need some help. And so if you do need some help and you do take on some help, no problem. But the cost of that help uh, is, is really on you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, one thing, one thing that I want to just note with respect to the BIBC partnership program, a key change that's being made this next year is that historically there's been one funding intake right. um, in that you apply once for funding for a project for the whole year and that's it. So that's your full year project and then you got to wait one whole year. Going forward, only for producers and processors, so not for industry associations, there's going to be two intakes in the year. So there'll be one intake that will happen in January. That's for projects that are beginning April 1st right. and projects that will end September 30th. So six months. So these right. are short projects. Right. And then, um, so a certain amount of the money that's available will be allocated to projects in that period. Then uh, sometime around June or July, we haven't announced the date yet, we're going to launch another intake for producers and processors that are interested in applying for BIBC partnership funding again, this time for projects that will begin September 1st and end March 1st. So for the second half of the year. The second half, oh, that's interesting. So if you've got some projects you wanna do now, it's some projects you wanna do later, you can split that. Now here's the thing though, is that all of those applications are separate, unique applications. So just because you get approved in the first funding intake because you were really competitive, doesn't necessarily mean you'll right. be competitive in the second one. So right. don't make any assumptions that it will happen. It just now allows for companies to apply for funding at multiple times in the year rather than a one and done. Uh, that's actually pretty cool too, because to your point, before a lot of people get, they have, a, there's a multitude of things to do. And sometimes it's hard to pick which one you, so if you, you know, if you, again, if you're well-written and your story is good and you can put it down, you've got odds, but, that's all you've got is odds. Yeah. No totally. guarantees if you got the first one that you get in the second. Totally. Okay. Fair enough. That's now, pretty cool. No, no, to to a sort of another program that we administer with the Ministry of Agriculture and Food is called the BC Agriculture and Food Export Program. So the website for that program is www.bcagriculture and food export program. I know it's long, but doesn't matter. Phil will put him into the into the into the yeah whatever, the and, note, whatever he does. And and so this program is also launching on January eighth, same time as by BC. Oh. It will also close on February second, same time as by BC. Um, you will use the same application portal. Uh, so you need one login to apply for both funding programs. Uh, they are two different application forms, but you'll be able to go into the same application portal and submit an application. Yeah, I, can, I can apply to both. You could, you could. Oh, that's the, key, cool. the key difference between the two funding programs is when I described the by BC partnership program is accessing <laughs> marketing dollars for province of British Columbia, yeah. the BC food, the BC agriculture and food export program is for marketing activities that happen outside of the province of British Columbia. So any other province or territory in Canada or any other international international uh, as well. Oh, yeah. Okay, so just anywhere outside of BC, you're good to go. Whether That's it's right. Alberta or Washington State, you guys don't care as That's long right. as what you're doing makes sense and it's a good program. Again, you've yeah. got some odds. Oh, wow. That's cool. And similar activities. So, you know, you want to go to trade shows as long as oh, you, are, you are exhibiting at trade shows, not yeah, just yeah. walking trade shows. You want to, um, you want to do uh, in-store demonstrations in those markets. 
you want to do advertisements, uh, online or digital advertisements targeted to a particular market. Um, with the BC Food and Agriculture, Agriculture and Food Export Program, you can also do sort of translation of, of materials, right? Because obviously language will be language. Uh, something that will come into play now. Um, and so though that's at the very high level, uh, it, that's the sort of easiest way and the most simple okay. way to describe uh, the two programs. Wow, very cool. That's great. That's great. There's some really cool stuff out there. And there's two programs you can shoot for. And, you know, again, if you take your time and write a good proposal, get your all your thoughts buttoned down, you've got a chance to to get some funding in a time where funding's getting tougher to find, which is which is great. Yeah. And, and, and so there will be a webinar for that program as well. I believe the webinar for that one is January 10th. Um, I, I may have I may have uh, mixed up the dates between the two, but the program website. Email me later, eight. and we'll get Phil to put him into the uh, notes. Yeah, those yeah, sure. are dumping everything on Phil. Like, oh, Phil, when he hears this, is, this is Phil's <laughs> problem, Phil. not mine, because I don't know how to do this, and I ain't gonna learn. So, Phil, no worries. all good. So, I encourage you to go to the website, That's register awesome. for the webinar, uh, where you'll be able to sort of go through a, a presentation in more detail on each okay. of the programs. It'll tell you a little bit about do's and don'ts. Um, and encourage you to go and ask us questions through our, our program website. Uh, you can also join the mailing list um, so that when updates on the program are announced, you'll be the first one to receive those. That's fantastic. Awesome, buddy. Awesome. Thank you. Like, like, thank yeah, you very much. I'm really glad we bumped into you at the BC Food and Bev to, uh, to pester you a little bit to come on and, uh, and talk about this. I think this, this is great yeah. for the producers. No, and it's a great idea. Um, like I said, it, like you said, I mean, the government's doing great things here, right? The government's, you know, um, putting their money on the table and saying we're going to share in on the um, yeah. on the cost. Uh, and, and really, the way I look at it is, I look at it as a way for uh, basically what government's trying to do is to de-risk certain activities for right. uh, entrepreneurs, right? So. Right. These may be activities that you know you want to do, but you may it may be too risky for you to do right, right. now, right? Uh, either it's a cash flow issue or it's a new market in, 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 when it comes to an export right. uh, market. Um, the government's saying, well, why don't you take that risk? Why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we participate well, sure. you, with you in that risk, right? Yeah. So it lowers your risk by basically half, right? Half. I think it's actually pretty. It's 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 a good way to do it, you know. And 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 the beauty of it, I think, more than anything, is you're still committed to it. So you still have to do your part. You have to think it through. It's not just you know falling from the sky, which is the ones. I, I mean, I know we all love those ones, but I don't think those really help us. I think these are the better ones to do. Yeah, you got to put some money out, but when you put your money on the table, you're more inclined to uh, absolutely yeah to do it no. to do it well, which is really good. Uh, great programs, buddy. Great totally. program. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks. That's Ken. all I needed you for. That was relatively painless. We will do the podcast sometime in the new year. Um, tell us more about other things you want to talk about, et cetera. But I think this is a great PSA. I hope our listeners um, take advantage of it. So you've guys got the Jan 8, Jan 9, uh, Feb 2nd or closes, webinars out there. Phil will have all the uh, links in the pages. Um, if they want to bug you on LinkedIn, are you okay with that? Or? Totally. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I get people yeah. reaching out to me all the time. Okay, so Karan Suri is on K A R A K A R A N Suri S U R I on LinkedIn, um, and he'll be the senior manager, project manager. I'm looking at it now uh, with M and P. So that is the guy you want to talk to, and um, at least you can point you to the right direction if you don't. If, if Phil hasn't done his job, which I'm sure Phil will, but just in case. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> That's Thanks, awesome. Dan. Buddy, happy, really holidays. happy holidays to you. Happy holidays to Phil and to all your uh, no. listeners and viewers Thanks as well. to you and to the family as well. Wish your dad a Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. And uh, we'll chat with you soon. Thanks Take for care. doing this. Take care. Bye. Take care, buddy boy. Ciao.